What is going on guys, it's Bay Games, and in this video I'm going to give details and theories about iRise. As you know, some people already experienced iRise and even IGN already made a review. So let's get into it, and the websites will be in the description so you can check them out. They have a lot of information for the Revolution map pack. So one player said, I also got a chance to play through some of the new zombies level I rise. You start in what appears to be a hotel lobby with a large desk, some stairs, an elevator and a whole lot of sky where the wall should be. So supposedly this is going to be the spawn. As you know, uh, we already have seen an elevator in uh, one of the trailers for a die rise. And as you know, uh, inside of the elevator there was actually a perk. So I don't understand too much, you know, if there will be a few elevators, you know, one for perks, perhaps one for um, for the backup punch, you know, machine, and perhaps one of them actually for the power-ups, because as you know, in Nuketown there is actually a door that you have to open and you get one power-up. So perhaps one of them will actually contain power-ups. That will be actually pretty cool, and uh, hopefully we will actually see that. But anyways... Um, for now, we know that at least there will be two elevators, you know, at least that's what I can say, I'm not sure though, but it keeps saying, or, you know, we said that this is a skyscraper and something apocalyptic happened here, because there are chunks of the building missing and destruction outside. So, Reza Algati in uh, the first trailer said, the environment is so different that it creates new gameplay and I think this is actually pretty cool and uh, I think what he's trying to say is that every single time that he plays zombies in uh, Die Rise you'll always have a new experience because the environment will always change so I think you know that's going to be really interesting and even Jimmy Zelinski said it's not just escaping zombies you have to worry about the environment and just dying by falling. So, as you know, in Green One, we already kind of had this, you know, the lava, the, you know, one of the jumps in the power room that you have to be careful or else you, you know, you die in the lava. And, uh, you know, the denizens, we can actually even consider that. So, there is already some, you know, really dangerous things in Green Run, but right here what he's trying to focus is in when you fall, you know. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to fall when they are trying to jump, you know, to one side to the other. So I think that's pretty cool, you know, but still we are like more focused in the zombies and that's why he's saying, you know, it's not just escaping zombies, you have to be focused in the environment too, you know. So another thing is, and they said that too, this brings, brings a lot of verticality and risk to your movements, once again, you know. If you run and turn the corner, the corner might not be there. Take it slow, find out where you are, and make a plan, and don't die. So once again, he's referring that the environment might change to every single game. So every single time that you play this map, maybe that corner that you had before might not be there anymore. Maybe that, you know, uh, stairs might not exist anymore. So that's actually something really cool and hopefully we actually experience that. So every single time the environment will be different and we will have different experiences. I think, you know, Die Rise is going to be really cool just, just because of that, you know. Another thing is, and he said, despite that warning, I died. Earning a little money lets my crew unlock a few doors, clear away rubble and see just how bad the surroundings were. The path we explored revealed more and more of the rubble, a destroyed store, an abandoned inactive escalator, and open elevator shafts, holes in the walls that led to unknown areas, or just outside into thin air. At one point I stepped forward only to slide into the remains of another building which was inverted. So I, I found myself in a room where the clock and light fixtures were mounted upside down, for instance. I won't ruin any surprises, no screens even. <clears throat> you will explore it soon enough yourself, and when you do, tell me what you can build with the parts I found scattered around the ruins. 
But I will wait. I'm, I'm sorry. But I will say that we found that if everybody gets in the elevator at the start of the level, something happens. So when I actually saw this, I was like, whoa, what the hell? So what he's trying to say is that perhaps if all the four players get inside of the elevator, something might happen. I don't know, maybe you actually end up dying right away. Maybe the elevator just, you know, crashes or, you know, just breaks down the part and you just, you know, just die right away because you just fall. I don't know, perhaps it actually goes to a secret room or maybe to different areas. But anyways, I'm pretty sure you guys have exciting ideas you know that might happen with the four players at the same time inside of the elevator so don't forget to leave them in the comments below let's get into the IGN review and uh, they kind of gave us a few you know um, details uh, I'm going to admit it's kind of hard to me to read what they you know said so I think you should go to the link because to me it's a little bit hard to you know uh, read what they actually said it's not easy to me, I'm not in English, you know, I'm from Portugal, so I'm, I will try my best, you know, but it, it's something, there is a few words here that are hard to pronounce. Anyways, let's get into it. The name may induce an eye roll, but this new zombies map feels very different from the rest of Black Ops 2. Instead of relatively open spaces, die rise places you in a crumbling skyscraper, it's much more claustrophobic than Green Run, consisting almost entire of tight hallways many of which have holes in them allowing zombies to attack you from above. You can use the elevator to move around, so this confirms that there is actually an elevator that is the method of transportation. So I was actually really happy when I saw this, though doing, doing so can be risky. And usually pieces of the building break in such a way that you can leap between sections. So that's what I was thinking about. If there is if there are four people inside of the elevator maybe it will break apart like I said before I, I think what they said here actually makes kind of sense to you know my theory before because I think we will just end up dying or maybe actually going to a new uh, you know room or something which will be really cool but then let's keep going just like in green one taking the time to learn the level will be premature in thy rise Run around the corner too fast and you might fall to your death. And you'll need to save your precious resources to purchase access to the new parts of the world. A ton of parts are scattered about the building, so my theme and I never managed to find a workbench. So I guess they actually didn't even found a workbench. It might be actually a really hard map. I think it will be just because the way that you have to jump around, you know, and especially in the high ground, you know, like, if you are trying to jump, you just don't care, you just jump, you know, because you have, like, a few zombies after you, so you just jump, you don't even care, and perhaps that might make you die, you know. So, I think it's going to be something really cool, and they already bring that in Green One when you have to jump in the power room, but like I said, it's not that hard, you know, but I'm pretty sure now it's going to be much harder. But anyways, I got more details, they said, on the top of the Undead Legions, you'll, you'll also face a deadly new minion. It looks similar to the goblin-like enemies that lash out at you in the fog and transit, only they come during specific rounds and can do short teleports around the environment. They go down really easily, but can pick off a survivor who strays on, on their own with ease. So, I was thinking, okay, this seems pretty similar to the ones in Kino der Toten. The only difference is that they usually are in every single round except the dogs rounds. But and they actually teleport, you know, and uh, they are easy to kill. But the only difference is that they set a new minion. So perhaps it's actually a mix of the denizens from the ones you know with in Kino der Toten. I don't know, but maybe it's actually the ones from Kino der Toten, but you know, like they are saying new minion because it didn't appear in Black Ops 2. I'm not sure, but it seems really similar to the ones in Kino Der Toten. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I have a few theories that I will explain in the next video because we are already in 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to be tuned for the next video. It will be out pretty, you know, pretty soon. Anyways, thanks for watching. 
Don't forget to leave a like and share, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.